Programming is always going to be a hot topic, especially when the question is what language should you learn? Now, there's tons of different material out there, such as courses, textbooks, tutorials that you can read and watch. And through the years, I've done my own fair share of these courses, and I've even created and taught my very own courses. But throughout the years, I've really left myself asking, is Go the greatest teaching language? Now, if you're new to my channel, my name is Melky. I'm a senior machine learning engineer over at Twitch, where I primarily write Go professionally. And I've really asked myself all the time, why are more people recommending Go for someone's first language when they want to get into programming. So what inspired me to make this video is actually the article, this blog post uh, written by Thorsten Ball back in October of last year that says, glad I did it in Go with the subheading Go, the greatest teaching language. Now, if you don't know who Thorsten Ball is, you can see this is his personal website. And Thorsten is a software engineer who works at Sourcegraph. And previously he worked at Zed. And before that, he has spent five years at Sourcegraph. I wrote and self-published two books you might have heard of. And those two books are Writing an Interpreter in Go, which is a book a lot of people recommend. I personally think it's one of the most popular textbooks when it comes down to teaching and learning about Go for the very first time or learning more in-depth details about Go. And the second book they wrote is Writing a Compiler in Go, which is a sequel to Writing an Interpreter. Now, I actually have both these books here. I have my own copies. And no, I was not paid to say this. They are just very good books that I recommend if you're interested in learning Go to get them and try them out. Now, you know, by the title of this, both of these books are written in Go. They are fully from start to finish use Go for different things that both of those books kind of teach in the premise of the textbook. And in this blog post, Thorsten kind of looks back on the eight year anniversary of running Interpret in Go. And year after year, he thinks back to himself, he is glad he used Go for these books. So you can see this example here, he has his wget where he basically downloads the zip, unzips it and runs Go run with the module off. And you can see it runs. And in the blurb below, he, he talks about that contained in the writing and interpreting Go code zip is the code from the very first release of writing and interpreter in Go. Written in 2016, using Go 1.7, frozen in time, compiling and running today. Using Go 123, no warnings, no errors. Now, at the time of this video, the major release of Go is 124 with the minor release 1.1. If you do go run main.go, you can see that it works. Now, if you are going to use this command, I actually have to do something. I have to create my own go.mod. And when you create a go.mod, it kind of staples the version that is used to write and compile the code. So because I'm using Go version 124, it works. But if for whatever reason I go into a later or an earlier release of Go, so let's say I have Go uh, 122 installed, or let's go even back to any version that's not one to, uh, here, 120.5. So if I go ahead and use that and we go back and double check, uh, whoops, Go version, Go 125. If I do Go run main.go, you can see I get a parsing error here. And if I run this command here, I also still get the error. So it's not exactly right, but Thorsten actually talks about this, that uh, I think the code in the book have barely changed since then. I had to fix some typos and bugs over the years, but really the only change I had to do in order to keep the code up to date was to drop a three line go.mod in there. So that users with go 113 or later don't have to use the module off environment variable. And you can see he added it in 2020, four years ago and four years after the original release. But the parts I really enjoyed about this blog post are the three following right here. So he starts off by saying, I had a hunch that Go would be a good choice. Here's what I wrote in the introduction section called Why Go. I bet that you can follow this book along even if you've never written a single line of Go in your life. And I think that is absolutely true. Go itself is pretty boring and simple to look at. I can even open up the example here from the monkey code, go up here. Let's just go into something like the main.go. If this is your first time reading Go, 
even if you have very minimal experience as a software developer in any language, you can pretty much figure out exactly what's happening all the way from your package declaration to import statements to the actual function and what's happening here. So we have this user and error, then we check the error over here. You have some print statements and then you start whatever this is and you can go deeper and find out what's going on and even here this doesn't look too complicated yes i admit it, it looks a little bit more fascinating than this main dot go function or this main function but all in all it's pretty easy to understand and that's the point point. and the second part is about the go tooling so the focus of this book is the interpreter we are writing the ideas and concept behind it and its implementation with Go's universal formatting style, thanks to Go format and testing frameworks built in, we can concentrate our interpreter and not worry about third-party libraries, tools, and dependencies. We won't be using any other tools in this book other than the ones provided by the Go programming language. And you've probably heard it all the time that the standard library in Go is super strong. It's a very good standard library for a language out of the box. However, what also is not talked about as often with the standard library is that it doesn't change all that often. It doesn't introduce breaking changes. And I don't think it will ever introduce breaking changes into the ecosystem. He goes on to say it's still formatted just like any other Go code. Go format hasn't changed. It still has no knobs to turn. As for the suspicion that Go is easy to understand and to translate, I think I now have the evidence to prove it. In the first years of the book being released, people asked whether they need to know Go to understand the books. Cautious about being judged in a contest I didn't enter, I said, well, you should know some Go. At least work through the tour, I think referencing tour of Go right here, yes, uh, before you start reading. But then, over time, more and more readers told me, hey, I've never done any Go before, I don't know Go, but I read the books, enjoy them, and translated the code into my favorite language. You can see here that monkeylang.org has been translated to a bunch of different languages, Rust, Elixir, PHP, Kotlin, Crystal, Scala, I mean, you name it, it's been translated into those languages. Code that's easy to understand and translate for readers that don't know the language and that has a shelf life that's hard to believe. Tooling that's easy to install and use for newcomers and that also didn't change in eight years, the ability to let you write an interpreter and bytecode compiler without using any third party dependencies, I know and love many other languages than Go, but I'm not sure which one would fit the bill quite like Go does. And so I doubled down further into the pros of learning Go, cons of learning Go, and the love it or hate it, which is the reverse error handling. So the pros of learning Go include the readability, concurrency, made easy, the strong standard library, which we talked before, the static typing without the verbosity. So think of like, you know, TypeScript where the type system and advanced TypeScript looks very nasty and it's just hard to read. Go keeps it pretty simple with the static typing. However, there are some cons to learning Go as well. So it's a general purpose language and it doesn't have a specific purpose, right? It's not, you know, used for lower level implementations like Zig or Rust. It's not something that used to create user interfaces, something like TypeScript with React and a framework. It's just kind of used all around uh, the board. Yes, you can make nice CLIs with it. Yes, you can do X, Y, Z, but it doesn't have one, you know, specific purpose for it. It doesn't have any memory handling because it's a garbage collector language. And lastly, it's boring. Writing Golang does get boring. Maybe the first time you write it, the first half an hour, you're like, oh, this is cool. But the more and more you get into it, the less opportunity you have to really think outside the box and the more so you are kind of writing Go as it was originally intended. With all this, I'm left with the conclusion that I want to kind of echo from the beginning of the video is why I think Go is a better first programming language to learn than Python and TypeScript. So one is Go is very explicit. And I think that's very good for first time writers. Something with Python and, and, and TypeScript, those can get gnarly, right? There's no implicit context. There's no decorators that you can you know add. There's nothing that makes debugging or understanding your code more difficult than it has to be. Go is just write it this way, get through it, learn what a for loop is, learn what an if statement is, learn what control statements is, uh, you know, constants, everything like that, you will be able to do with Go. You don't really have a lot of opportunity to mess things up, whereas with Python and TypeScript are kind of like the wild, wild west. Anything can go. Another thing that I like is you learn how things work under the hood. 
more than Python and TypeScript. Now, I'm not going to say Go is going to teach you everything you need to know about computer science or computer theory or anything like that. Uh, I think languages like Zig, Rust, maybe even something lower level will do a much better job. C, for instance, better job of doing that. But comparing Python, types and Go, Go actually forces you to think a little differently than those two other languages. So you'll get familiar with uh, memory management, like we know, uh, management with pointers, right? Pointers. And the last point that I like the most is tutorials from 10 plus years ago are still relevant, okay? With something like TypeScript and Python, someone new could stumble their way into an old Reddit thread or into an old video, and it would just not be relevant to them because the language and the ecosystem has transformed so much. Whereas with Go, shit doesn't really change. It stays the same, and it's like that on purpose. So I want to finish things off here by looking at a talk, conference talk Rob Pike did back in 2015 at .go. Here, the talk is called Simplicity is Complicated, and he starts off this first sec section on talking about what makes Go successful. And so there's many reasons cited, but basically speed of compilation, speed of execution, deployment, tools, libraries. And these are not language features. Less often cited, true language features such as interfaces or concurrency. All are important, but not really the answer. Okay, and when he looked further, his answer is simplicity. Go is simple, at least compared to established languages. And the reason why I think this is such a good answer is I think for someone new to programming, someone new to learning a language, someone new to coding, I think the more simple the answer is, the less they have to think outside, the less knobs they have to turn, the better that language is for that person and that individual to learn. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for sticking around all the way to the end. I wanna give a shout out to Thorsten Ball for making that great article, but I really want to give my opinion on why I also agree that Go is the greatest teaching programming language, whether you are building your own course, trying to teach a concept, or overall, someone new being introduced to programming for the first time, I think Go has a great opportunity there to get more people involved. But as always, let me, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, yeah, stay safe, stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next video, which I don't even know what it is, but let me know. If you want to see me make a video, let me know what you want to see me to... <laughs>